Okay, so for the neutral, a little bit of a disappointing one for this one. Ireland played fantastically. They've played the power rugby they've been famous for. And yeah, they just won the game within the first 20 minutes. You, you, you think... I think for me, I, th I think the real difference between the two sides was the difference in attack, not so much the defence. Scotland ran up against a brick wall against Ireland and Ireland managed to find the holes, yes, but I think this was really kind of... <sighs> it was a difference in attack rather than like a better defence. What I mean by that is that Ireland's inventiveness in, attacks, in attack was just astounding. The commentator said they had saved some moves that... A lot of their game planning up until this point, until the tournament, until the World Cup, has been pretty simple, and I'd agree, you know. It's been very much kind of like up the middle, you know, lazy, the lazy forward running that I've been talking about in terms of just like the forwards stay close to the ruck and they just power, 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 power through the middle. That's not what Ireland are doing in an attack anymore. What we're seeing here is some crazy misdirection plays. I'm thinking of the, the first try that was created basically because Hansen came round off of his wing and created an extra man on the outside, which allowed Ringrose to cut inside while someone was trying to cover Hansen, creating an extra man. The next try by Ireland, something that I've never seen before is a mall is set up, Gibson Park, the scrum half, moves out to the 10 channel, and then from there, the forward acts as the scrum half and gives him a great pass on the forward, Gibson Park gives it to Sexton, Sexton passes it, loops back round as he usually does, gets it popped off to him. So basically creating like an extra two men in attack that just, you know, just won by basically creating a double, like a mirror image of Sexton and Gibson Park in the fly half channel. Their inventiveness in attack compared to Scotland was just magnificently different. Scotland's attack was weirdly uninventive, which, you know, it's not really a phrase that you use for Scotland's attack. Usually, you know, it's ma magic created from the fly half position of Finn Russell, some great running from their back line, uh, basically backed up with great uh, a great offload game as well. And that just was non-existent. Ireland go in and get their first try and they get it into the corner with the, with the move that I've already talked about. And then it was Scotland's turn to answer that and they managed to get possession get inside the 22 and they got multiple penalties and they decided to go for the corner and I think the reason that they decided to do that is because they wanted to play the possession game I think I've said this before in a previous video when these two sides play each other it's going to be a game of who has the ball ball more often and within the first half Ireland had the ball more often than they won but anyway Scotland in when they got into the 22, they kept going for the corner, kept going for the corner, and it didn't work. And it just felt from that point on, they were, they were on the catch-up, you know. I think this had a chance to be an incredible game if Scotland, from that, scored a try. And I was thinking at that point, before they managed, before Iron managed to clear their lines, man, we're going to see two great teams go punch for punch here. But I think if you're Scotland... Not just this game, but for the tournament, I think you're leaving disappointed. You've come in super hot. You know, you're the apple of everyone's eye. You, you're, the, you're the golden boy of rugby. You, you're playing some really inventive, cool stuff. You beat England in the Six Nations, and you're looking good. And then in this tournament against the two teams of, that you need to beat, South Africa or Ireland, or just one of them, you need to beat one of them, you've, you've come up uninventive, making mistakes against South Africa and just running up against a brick wall against Ireland. I mean, I was just amazed. Like, I'm talking, I've talked about Ireland's moves where they're using different men and misdirection and, like, you know, uh, people are moved all over the field to create uh, space. And there was none of that from Scotland. All of Scotland's attack was pass out to the man, pass out to the man, crash up. Nothing created space. The offload game wasn't working because Ireland weren't committing to the rucks, meaning that there were always men around if an offload was tried to be popped off, which is very intelligent defensive rugby. But there was nothing, you know, they never had another gear to shift into Scotland. They never had, a, okay, well, this isn't working. What are we going to do next? And at the end, it just it just got completely overpowered because they had no idea what to do in attack to answer to, to Ireland. And Scotland, I mean, they're not a bad defensive team, but 
they're not known for defensively just being stout and just keeping the opposition out of their own half. They need to have that attack and go forward and have the threat of going forward to make the opposition kind of stand off a little bit. And they didn't have that today. It was completely nullified. So it's a shame. It's probably Scotland's tournament over. I mean, it is Scotland's tournament over. And Ireland, I mean, wowzers. Oh, wow. I mean, they took off all the good players, all the good players. They all have, they have lots of great players. But they took off all, all the, uh, the key players off at about the 45, 55 minute mark. I wrote here, I think literally a minute before Sexton came off, I was like, this is the point we need to get Sexton off. It was like 36 nil by that point. I'm just like, just get the guy off, wrap him up, get him in for the important game. And they did just that. So that was it. I mean, there really isn't much else to say in this game. It was lost within the first 40 minutes and Scotland had no answer to come out in the second half to try and change the narrative. And Ireland scored very quickly after that. It really was just that difference in the attacking rugby and what they did with the ball. Yeah, I mean, the, the first 40 minutes, I think there was a lot of, like, alarming things. Scotland going for the corner. Hamish Watson's not on the bench. Mac Hansen has gone off for a HIA. Sky Ireland has scored again. This could be over quickly. Tap and go for Ireland and Scotland. But ref getting in the way of the Ireland attack. I mean, it was just, yeah, it was it was crazy. There was also the, the handbags incident very early into the second half. Ollie Smith trips up Johnny Sexton. You can't touch Golden Boy. you got to leave him alone. Uh, Johnny obviously reacts. Uh, everyone reacts. Ends up in a big fight. Hey, you. Let's fight. Them's fighting words. <laughs> With a highlight of Schlotman taking, I think, Sheehan <laughs> over the barriers, which he's probably going to get fined for, but it was funny. Another side note that I think was made it even funnier is that if, if for those of you watching at home and those of you in the stadium will know this because you were there, I think the funniest part about all of that is that when the fight started breaking out, the stadium started blasting the music really loudly and have the lights going off, just trying to like, I don't know, like gear up the opposition, like so not just basically like ramp both of the teams up to get over excited in the moment. And you know, it's a French stadium, you know, maybe this is a a French tactic, or it's like a conspiracy theory that France are trying to get an Irish player sent off by <laughs> causing this fighting, or, or a Scottish player or something, but hey, I, that was funny, man. It was it was very entertaining to watch, but that's it for, for my game, I guess. The only thing I've got written here, really, for me, is that James Ryan, the, he's got another injury, I think he dislocated his finger. It's not good, I mean, Ian Henderson's a good stand-in, but uh, their strongest second-row pairing is definitely has James Ryan in it, but I mean, that's it. Uh, bit of a disappointing game, considering the, uh, the build-up that we had for it. So, uh, I'm going to be watching the games tomorrow. Probably won't do a video on it, but um, th the main thing really is now the quarterfinals, which can be very, very exciting. So, I'll see you then. Illuminati confirmed.